Hi guys and welcome to the channel. We're here at Oxy Park Golf Club which is about 10 minutes outside of Wolverhampton. Oxy Park is a par 71 and roughly just over 6,000 yards. I'll be playing off the yellow tees today so I'll quickly talk through each of the holes now. Hole 1 is a 410 yard par 4 and a really tough first hole to begin your round with. Stroking in the index 5, so rear just throw you straight in at the deep end. The first shot is to a narrow and intimidating fairway. You'll see along the course that this is heavily tree lined and trying to find yourself in the fairway really important for this first hole. There are two mounds slightly left of the rough at roughly 200 yards. These look like old bunkers that have been filled in. For my third shot I had 215 still in, um, which is not what you want to have when you're trying to save par. Came up short just to the right of the bunker. The green is fairly flat and the bunkers are positioned which just does suit a fade into the green. The green is fairly flat and luckily for me managed to get up and down for a bogey. Hole 2 and a mid length par 3. The difficulty here is trying to get through the tight gap in between the trees. This really isn't a big gap at all. Aiming for the middle of the green is an absolute must here. The green itself is wider at the back, so aiming for the back of the green will certainly give you the best opportunity of finding that par. As I found the rough on the left here quite long, um, and trying to get up and over that bunker was a really tough shot to try and get up and down with. Again, ended up with a bogey, and if you do find yourself off the green, really isn't a bad result at this stage. <laughs> yard par 4 and is the first of two dog legs. Again this is a hard fairway to hit. Anything over to the right there will probably run into the trees as you'll find my ball do in just a second. There is a yardage post in the middle of the fairway. Trying to aim to the left of that will give you a really good shot into the green. I didn't have much opportunity to, to do anything else other than to punch out by myself in the fairway and to give myself a short wedge just into the green there. The green itself Run slightly from right to left and there is a large collection area down to the right giving you a fairly decent opportunity of getting up and down. to the left which is again plays very similar to hole three. The turn does come a little bit shorter than the hole three so finding yourself in the fairway maybe a little bit down the right will give you the best opportunity into the green. Might not look too obvious on the video but there are plenty of undulations to this fairway so the ball was slightly above my feet when playing this shot and um, which meant that I did pull it a little bit left. Again playing into the trees left me no choice other than to chip out and trying to get onto the green and to give myself a good opportunity to get up and down. Um, the green itself, again a fair sized green to work with and again plenty of undulations into this green so trying to find the middle of the green depending where the pin is is really important to giving yourself a good opportunity of getting par here.
four of the whole five. This will open up at about 230 yards without a bounce all down the right hand side there. I was trying to aim for the big tree down the left and is certainly reachable for the longer hitters. Trying to keep yourself to the left hand side of this fairway is important for getting into the green as you don't want to flirt with trying to go out of bounds. The green is raised and is like an upturned down bowl. Trying to find the green is really important to give yourself the best look at the par here. Uh, anything that is missing the green is going to leave you a really tough shot to get up and down at as anything, anything to the right or the left or long is going to give you a good chip but it's above you as you play into the green. Hole 6 and a slightly uphill short par 3, nothing more than a wedge for most players here. The trouble here is the two bunkers that are short, the one on the right is particularly deep, you won't see it on the video but I would definitely try and avoid this at all costs. For me, playing to the middle, to the back of the green will give you a really good chance at getting at par for this hole. Ended up with a birdie, super pleased on this hole to walk away with that. of the par fires. The difficulty here is that the trees on the right are all out of bounds and the trees on the left are super thick. So aiming for the middle of the fairway, trying to get to the top of the hill, really important, especially for the longer hitters. This green is certainly reachable in two. For those that are laying up short, there is a bit of a collection area down to the right as the green slopes from left to right. So making sure that especially in the summer, that this ball will potentially roll out towards the out of bounds. The green, fairly spacious one. There are two reasonably deep bunkers protecting the front of this green. So aiming to find yourself towards the back of the green, really important to try and get yourself there for par. index one and certainly the toughest hole on the course. You'll be very daring to take on the water which is at roughly 250 yards. It doesn't really give you any other choice other than to play short of the water. However, this does leave you a really long second shot into that green. Again, didn't feel that this was worth going for in two, so I did lay up to a comfortable yardage for that third shot in the hope to try and get myself up and down. If I'd have known that there was so much space on the right hand side of the green, I may have gone for it, but again, didn't feel that this was gonna be, give me a good chance at par. The green itself is fairly flat when you get there, however, there is a large bunker to the left hand side and a smaller bunker to the right hand side. This hole really does play like a short par five. I would not be attempting to get to this green in two. For most players, you're gonna have a shot on this hole and I would certainly use that to your advantage. This completes the first loop of the course. A quick walk around the back of the first hole will take you straight to the ninth. to the right this time. However, out of bounds or down the right hand side of this hole will give you no option other than to try and avoid that. So aim down the left hand side. There are two fairway bunkers, so if you can be short of those, they will give you a good shot into the green with a mid-ish iron. I flirted a little bit too much with the out of bounds, which left me no choice other than to chip over the bunker. The green itself is fairly flat, 
and protected by two bunkers, short and right, short left and right of this green. So aiming for the back end of this green will give you a good chance for par. and a 500 yard par 5. This opening tee shot is through the narrow gap but anything past the tee box will certainly open out. Problem here is out of bounds all down the right and what you're aiming for is to try to find the gap between the two fairway bunkers down the right hand side. For the longer hitters trying to get past the two bunkers is certainly doable and this should give you a good chance of getting into the green for two. I ended up in the right hand trees here so it like, gave me no choice but to sort of lay up and then try and attack the green from the third shot. The green itself is wider at the back so aiming for the widest part of the green is your shot here. The green is slightly downhill towards the front there so if you do find the front edge like I did you'll have two uphill putts for the bar. And a short par four by this club standards and is definitely reachable for the longer hitter. I decided to play a long iron into the middle of the fairway. I was aiming to leave myself 100 yards as this is my favourite distance. I think I must have hit the 100 yard marker as it was aiming straight for the middle of the fairway, hit something, bounced dramatically right and then carried on quite a bit when I eventually did get to my ball. The green has raised borders, thick nasty stuff on the left and the bunker, anything long will be out of bounds. So playing to the front of the green will give you a good chance to two put in this. I was slightly off the green for that third shot but managed to save par in the end. here and this is uphill and um, you won't be able to see the bottom of the pin so I'll, what I recommend is taking an extra club and just playing it nice and easy to try and get yourself past the pin. There is plenty of space left anything right will go into a bit of a dip so you will have a chip onto the green that is slightly raised above you when you play the ball. There are bunkers surrounding the front edge of this green even more reason to play along to avoid getting into those. The green slopes from left to right, so if you are on the right hand side of the green you will be faced with an uphill putt going forwards. Hole 13 and the final par 5 for the round. This is a narrow tee shot, trying to thread the ball through the trees does make this shot an intimidating one. However the trees on the left hand side there you should be able to get over that with the driver. The fairway opens out. Um, once you get past those trees, so this should give you a good shot into the green. For the longer hitters, again, go and ball at in two. And if you do choose to go for the green in two, I recommend aiming for the front of the green. This will avoid the two bunkers either side of the green. The green itself is short and narrow, so if you do end up on the green in three, this will give you a good chance at par. a short par 3 which does play uphill. This green is like an upturned down bowl again. Thick rough and bunkers surrounding the entirety of this green 
so if you do miss it, this will be a difficult up and down. Trying to get past the bunkers that are short, um, so therefore I would recommend taking an extra club. Play to the middle of the green or to the back, this will give you a good chance for your par. and a dog leg right. The aiming pole is in the middle of the fairway and this is the widest part of this hole. I'd certainly aim towards the aiming pole here. If you can get past the turn this should give you a short shot into the green however laying up to that thickest part will give you, a rough, will give you roughly a mid iron into that green. As you approach the green there is a water hazard down the left, plenty of space right so if you are going to miss that is your position to miss. The green itself is small has plenty of undulations and does slope from back to front. Here, I would aim for the middle of the green or even the front. This should avoid the water hazard left and then give you an uphill putt towards the pin depending where it's cut. And a short par four here. This is a good opportunity to try and get as close as possible to the green. I didn't quite fancy it. I, there are four bunkers positioned in this fairway. I wanted to play just the yardage that I felt comfortable giving myself into the green. Didn't play it particularly well so I left myself a longer iron than I really wanted. There are undulations and the ball is slightly above my feet in this position here. You are playing onto a raised green so anything that doesn't hit the green will leave you a tricky shot to get up and down with. I was really happy to make par on this hole, not as easy as it might seem. Hole 17 and a shorter par 4. It is essential that you find the fairway on this tee shot. It narrows down the further you get down the fairway, so if you can lay up to a yardage that you feel comfortable into the green, this will really give you a good chance of par. The green is a good size and if you can find the middle of the green, the two foot here is a good opportunity to, to save your par. Do not go long left. The trees here are surrounded by thick grass and if you do go long left then you will more than likely lose that ball. and a long par 4 and stroke index 2 this is not an easy hole to have to finish off with the fairway is really narrow and again guided by trees all the way down this fairway there is a ridge in the middle of the fairway however trying to play short of that most golfers this shouldn't be a problem as this ridge comes at about 280 yards down the fairway unfortunately my phone died just at the wrong time and you won't see anything past my second shot the green is, is flat and should give you no problem in two putting from the screen. So over to the review. I've broken this down into three sections and I'm going to be giving each section a score based out of five. So I've scored on the general feel and the facilities. I've also broken down the course into three sections. And so we've broken down into course layout, course difficulty and course condition. And then finally we'll go on to the value of the course. I've given the general feel and the facilities a score of 2 out of 5. On first appearances I do like the fact that there is a barrier as you enter the driveway. The courses that I've played that have this have always been to a good standard. 
car park is a decent size and even on a Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock I had no problem parking. My tea time wasn't t until 2 and eventually after a bit of a walk around went into the pro shop. I, again good size pro shop, got all of the stock that you need in there so balls, spare clothing, clubs etc. The bar and for most people the main section, a good size bar, indoor and outdoor facilities and as, as you can see it was a nice day on when I played and so yeah it was good to see that people outside having a drink after their round. I was disappointed with the lack of warm up facilities though, um, certainly no driving range and no obvious warm up nets. The staff that I came across were really friendly and happy to help. I think the guy in the pro shop's name was Wayne and again really approachable, really friendly guy to have sort of introduced to the club. The members that I played with down, down 18, um, they were really friendly and really complimentary um, of the club, which was good to get that first hand experience of what it is like to be a member there. The place did look pretty run down um, and could certainly do with a sprucer. Um, the buildings looked old and didn't make you feel like you were at a well established club. The only other thing worth noting is that you will need to wear a collar for this club. The guy in the pro shop did mention this, but again had no challenges when we got onto the court. The condition of the course was pretty good. We have had in Wolverhampton at the time of video in a lot of rain and a lot of sunshine, so the ground was quite soft. I gave this a 3 out of 5. Slightly sharper edges would have given this course a really good feel. The greens were really, really good, really smooth, really true to, true to their line, couldn't fault them at all to be perfectly honest, and they were very consistent the, the entire way around the course. I gave the difficulty a 2 out of 5. I do feel that on the wrong day that this course could make you look a little bit stupid. The tight fairways, the greens that were difficult to find, the sort of, sort of turn greens, again, could have made this, this score a lot higher for me today. I would have ended up on 34 points for today's round and again not a bad score considering I didn't know the course at all. It is a little bit on the shorter side and being accurate off the tee and that second shot will help you score pretty well around this course. The layout of the course, I gave this a 2 out of 5 as well. I mentioned early on in the video that you play a loop of 8 and then you play a loop of 10. I did find this a little bit weird and I remember when I was playing that there was a group of four that were walking down the middle of the ninth and the, the first. I did wonder why at the time why they were doing this but obviously now knowing that the reason is that you sort of end the nine sort of part way into that loop um, did make it a little bit weird for me. Um, I also felt that the par threes were all similar in nature and there was a few holes that did feel fairly similar as well. And for the final section, we're going to talk about value. I ended up paying £30 for this round on a Sunday afternoon. I had no problems with booking um, this round at, through Golf Now. The price did include, however, a £5 blue light discount. I love this and I, I can't think of another course that does this. It's a really fair play to Oxley for, for those blue light card holders. I wouldn't have wanted to pay much more than £30. I didn't feel that the course justified any more than that. However, for £30 for a round of golf, you can't complain, and when the sun's shining, you definitely can't complain for that one. This gives the course a score of 12 out of 25, so this will be 2 out of 5 in total. If you've enjoyed this review and you want to subscribe to the channel or like the video, please do. It really helps to promote the channel. If there's any courses you'd like me to get at, then feel free to drop a comment in the comments section. Thanks everyone. Speak to you next time.